It is Christ the King Sunday, October 31st, 2021. The service will begin in about seven minutes.
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let our Lord Jesus Christ accept us to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great command. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. These two commandments hang on the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us.
Almighty and everlasting God, who didst will to restore all things in thy well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that all the kindreds of the earth, set free from the calamity of sin, may be brought under his most gracious dominion, who with thee, O Father, and thee, O Holy Ghost, liveth and reigneth, one God, world without end. Amen. Let us pray, O God, our refuge and strength, who art the author of all godliness, be ready, we beseech thee, to hear the devout prayers of thy church, and grant that those things which we ask faithfully, we may obtain effectually. Through the same, Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the first chapter of the epistle to the Colossians, beginning at the 12th verse. Brethren, we give thanks unto the Father, which, which hath made us be meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life, who hath delivered us from the powers of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is in the image of an, the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him, and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace throughout the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Here in the this. Thanks be to God. six.
Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the 18th chapter, the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 33rd verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again. He called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, for our salvation, came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. He shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning to you all and Eve of Saint of All Saints Day, but also because it's the last Sunday in October, we celebrate it as the uh, Feast of Christ the King, which is important to us and the Anglican province of Christ the King because it's our namesake and we do bring this back every year. It's an old tradition, but we keep it alive here. The, uh, the symbol of our whole province uh, that's there on the, on the front of your cover, cover of your uh, bulletin this morning is um, Christ the King. And from Luke 133 of his kingdom, there shall be no end. So we are, I would say proud of it, but we are happy with that, that designation because that's who we are and who we celebrate, Christ our King. More about that in the sermon. Anyway, our Anglican church women have succeeded in sponsoring World Vision this year and Women's Resource Clinic, both uh, those funds fully funded for our commitment to those. Uh, we do thank you all who did give to those. We ask you to keep up the good work. And uh, when the new year rolls around, please pledge to your giving of that as well, but also uh, to those year end special gifts that come around, which includes our ACW's Drive for Women's Resource Clinic for diapers and other baby goods. It ends today, today's the day. So if you brought them along, great. Take them into our office, drop them by in the front uh, bench that's there and we'll gather them up in the coming week and take them over. 
with their love and admiration to you. Thank you very much. If you wish to give it out, a monetary gift, you can give it to ET this morning, or made out to the ACW, and noted that it is for the diaper drive. Shoe boxes. Uh, these are the Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes that come from Samaritan's Purse, the, the Graham, Graham organization. Um, you can get one of these that is not folded up yet, or you can take the one that is folded uh, if you don't want the challenge of figuring that out. Um, I'm told that children no longer have the skills automatically to do this. So I guess because it's got instructions, we aren't going to trust them with that. But you probably have a clever child, you know. In any case, somebody uh, who's smart with boxes can figure this out. And you can put this together. Then you also get one of these labels that's sitting there separately. And you label this boy or girl and an age group that it uh, pertains to because toys and other items can be certainly given to two to four years or five to nine years or 10 to 14 years age groups. You can take one of these little pamphlets that also has a thing on the back and you can take with, with it your um, the, the instructions of how to pack it, what kinds of things can be put in the box, what should not be put in the box, like any of the liquids. These are going overseas and they're going to be jostled around and we don't want them leaking. So, and you don't tape them or wrap them shut. You just rubber band them so that they can open them up easily and see what's inside. They check all the boxes, make sure that they're okay. So your gift is not ruined by somebody else's exploding or whatever that thing does. At any rate, you've got three weeks now. Go uh, 21st of November or before. You can bring your completed shoebox back in and we'll gather them up and take them over to Calvary Chapel, which also then takes them over to uh, the Graham organization to Operation Christmas Child. And we take part in an international drive to let Christ be born in all hearts everywhere. So it's a good thing. We do it every year. Now, there will be no ACW meeting in November, but December 5th will be the next meeting, which will tie the two months together. Just note that. Also, I have uh, a pastoral letter to read to you. Oh, I was before that. In the mail, in the next couple of days, will come to you your pledge, uh, pledge letter and pledge form with your registration for membership in the church. We do this every year in November. You have the whole month to put it together and send it back in, filled in both, both top and bottom. If you are new to the church, you fill in the particulars of your birth date and other things and marriage status. So we have a good record of you and we don't say it wrong. But then also uh, we can contact you. If you have already done this, just check the box and fill in the, talks, the top things and anything that's changed. If you have a new email address, make sure we are current for that. And the bottom is your pledge for the year 2022. Then you believe it's going to be 2022. Anyway, uh, you pledge either a tithe, which you just check and then estimate, or an actual amount per week, month, or year. And then special funds down here. Make sure you put your name and signature at the bottom as well as at the top because we cut these in half and lose that information if you haven't filled it in at the bottom. So make sure that those are all filled in. And you get them in, you can turn it into the office or put it in the pledge uh, in the um, alms basin or any such thing anytime you want in the next month. We thank you for that. Now, finally, I am uh, to read a pastoral letter from our Archbishop to be read today to you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I am writing to let you know I am having one last surgery to eradicate my cancer on Friday morning, November 5th, AD 2021. And I ask for your prayers for a successful surgery and a speedy recovery. I am looking forward to being cancer free and getting on the road to recovery so I can get back to my duties and responsibilities to you as soon as possible. I also want to let you know how much Mrs. Upham and I have appreciated all your cards and gestures of goodwill, especially the food cards with which to order food in. They are very handy and very useful. I have been told by my surgeon that I will be in the hospital about seven days and then healing at home for six to eight weeks. Please keep Mrs. Upham and me in your prayers, and I hope to be out and about by the first of the year. 
I wish you all a joyful Christ the King Sunday today and a blessed All Hallows Tide or All Saints Tide in Christ, Archbishop Upham or John. We are de deeply moved in prayer for, for him to get through this okay. It's not an unserious surgery. Uh, you can tell if he's six, seven days in the hospital afterwards. So do pray for his successfully coming through it. It is expected to work, but we, uh, we want a good outcome. And so do pray for our Archbishop John. Thank you. Now let's sing hymn number 356. the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Our lives begin in quiet darkness, secretly, making each of us uniquely who we are. Our lives are lived forward from that starting date to another day, our final breath. And these lives are described for the birthday and a date of dying. There is a dash between those two dates. That dash is how we lived, who we knew, what we accomplished, all our habits, traits, words, and a life. Long or short, that dash is important because what follows that second number depends entirely on how that dash took its place in the world and what its intentions were toward Jesus Christ. 
that person responsible for every date and every dash that ever was. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. There is a beginning of almost everything. Only God has no beginning. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit are eternal and have no beginning. Time had not begun when they already were there. Enter creation. And you also enter time, a new future, feature, a new dimension. In the beginning, there already was the word, the Father and the Spirit, and they are all God and they are one God. God has no dates, no dash, but just is. The Father showed the word what had become of humanity. We began okay, but soon be used one feature of our created being, against his plan. Our free will had pulled against his will and we'd broken the creation. So in a kind of obedience, we'll never really understand. The word received the life of a man and was born in this world, a date, a dash, and a purpose. He was born as helpless and as weak as any human baby. He was born in a barn amid animal noises and smells. He was born to a virgin whose secret was known to her husband, a few relatives, and to all of God's angels. And a wicked human king with an ill-fitted crown slept uneasily in nearby Jerusalem. Now kings and queens are born into a lineage. Most often they are from their birth in line for the office or not. Jesus, son of Mary, inherited his crown in a rather curious manner. His bloodline was entirely that of ancient King David through his mother alone. But his royalty is bestowed through his adoptive father, Joseph, whose bloodline was cursed from having any more kings, but who, also, who still descended from the line of kings. A son of David whose adoptive father was Joseph, but without Joseph's bloodline, could indeed restore the lost line of the kings. Christ was born a king then, but no one knew it. No one, that is, except a small circle of Zoroastrian magi who saw the birth of a new star and interpreted the sign as the fulfillment of the prophecy by Balaam over Israel, and thus must be the star of Jacob and the scepter and lordship seen 1400 centuries 14 centuries before. They came first to Jerusalem, knowing they were seeking a baby king. Redirected to Bethlehem, they unwilling, unwittingly triggered Herod's murderous assault on Bethlehem's baby boys just after Jesus' young family fled south to Hebron and on to Egypt. We don't believe in mere fate, as though everything must turn out exactly according to a plan that can't be altered, can't be changed. That kind of existence turns fate into fatalism. We believe in freedom. We live, we move, we have our being. We're not dolls. But then things are also not random, without a purpose, accidental and meaningless either, no. God made us with a purpose, and it's finding that purpose and following it willingly that's the trick. Jesus found his purpose. It's the pride of all theologians that they may tell us just how much Jesus knew about himself and when he knew it. I wouldn't say any of that with authority. Did the maker of our universe know all he was and all he had done consciously as, as a baby? Who's to say? I don't put it past him. But it is foolish to say that he left some of his Godhead behind and as man was less than fully God in any way. But the complete revelation of his purpose in being made a man, his incarnate mission, seems to have been laid out to him in sequence, aiming his feet toward the cross at times of important events in his life. As a youth talking with the elders, scribes, and priests of the temple, he appears to have grown an understanding of who he is. 
on the desert, age 30, fasting and being tempted. His purpose seems to have gained in clarity. Again on the Mount of Transfiguration, in consultation with Moses and Elijah, his face was then turned toward Jerusalem, and he began talking of his imminent death and resurrection. The picture gained detail as he walked and spent nights in prayer. Again, I make no rude assertions about his human mind not knowing what his divinity inherently knew. He never made a misstep, but he took every step by himself as an act of holy will, united with the will of the Father, voluntarily, sacrificially, joyfully. Anyone may live a life in such grace, knowing the steps and taking them obediently with a single mind and a whole heart. If they know their true purpose in living and see God's hand in what they're made for, that's the key. That, folks, is the meaning of life. Now, ask anyone the meaning of life, and you can sit back and hear their silly answers. Maybe not completely silly, but rather innocent. We are to be good people. We're to find personal fulfillment. We're to love and be loved. We're to build something that outlasts ourselves and be remembered kindly. Or be the president of the United States. I don't know. When we fail to reach even these low goals, we may despair and see ourselves as failures. Prevailing philosophies of today may try to explain away our existential apoplexy with citations of this being an accidental universe, the atheist triumph over God once and for all. There is no transcendent purpose. Just make the most of it. Find your own meaning, for one is as good as any other. For my life to have a meaning, there has to be a master plan, a mega theme, a greater story of which my life is merely a paragraph. But it's my paragraph, and I have to show up and play my part in it. I've read that my first parents were fashioned in the very image and likeness of God himself. That's great. He gave them governorship of this planet, its animal life, and made us gardeners in a perfect world once. What happened to that? Well, we learn and we mourn the loss. But after the great canvas is stretched out, colored in many layers and patterns, foretelling of a great person one day to arrive for us, in the middle of human history, there comes a man. He comes in the least likely manner. He is worshiped by foreigners. He lives in obscurity, making wooden objects in his father's shop located in the Podunk village of Nazareth. He is baptized by his cousin in Jordan and gains a small band of disciples. Then the story leads out from there. We know it's many steps, steps that eventually led to a secret garden in an olive grove where deep in the night an arrest team swooped down on 12 drowsy men where they chained and shackled Jesus led him to the priest's house, illegally tried and condemned him, and finally led him into the governor's palace early the next morning. And Pontius Pilate was there to ask him, are you really the king of the Jews? Jesus raised his eyes to the level of the Romans. Do you ask this yourself? Or are others saying this about me? What? You take me for a Jew, Scott Pilate. Your own nation and your chief priests are bringing these charges and have brought you to my chambers. So tell me, what is it that you've done? A king, are you? My kingdom is not from this world. If it were, then my servants would already be at war and I'd never come under the authority of these Jewish rulers. But at this hour, my kingdom is not yet here. Jesus gazed into the governor's eyes, looking for comprehension. This was a man who understood power. So you're telling me you're a king then? He repeated. A long moment transpired. Two men from opposite worlds held in each other's eyes. Jesus' words came with authority that shook Pilate as he said, your words say that I am a king. 
true. And to this end was I born. For this very cause was I sent into this world in order to testify to the truth. Every soul that knows the truth can hear my voice. Pilate's world pivoted loose of its proud moorings. The challenge to what he'd always seen as dependable lines of authority, philosophies, and beliefs were now broken by the man in chains, bruised, disempowered, standing accused before him. All he could manage was the hollow argument, what is truth? What indeed is truth? St. Paul says the Father created us for a purpose, to fashion us as saints in light, delivered from darkness into his own son's kingdom. He has redeemed us by the blood of Jesus, forgiven our sins. He who is the very perfect image of God, firstborn, first risen from the dead. It was by him that creation sprang into being at his first command, let there be light. Every orb, every living being, and it was all made for him. Before anything found form or substance, it is by his word everything came to be. By the Father's will, all fullness perfectly is found in him. He has made peace through the shed blood of the cross, reconciled every wrong in himself, has made for himself and now us a kingdom that shall glorify him forever, our eternal future. Home. If there is a purpose, then there is a way to achieve that purpose. If we exist at all, we have been made for something. It's not a given that we will respond to his will, but he gives us abundant grace and mercy, power and insight. If we'll let his will be our own. The meaning of life is to know the king by name and to serve his purposes while in this life, this dash strung between two dates so that after that second number we enter the joys of his eternal kingdom and join the happy crowds of saints in light this is the feast of christ the king of this kingdom there shall be no end in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost amen now remember the words of the lord jesus how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive <clears throat>
Blessed Sacrament and offer the same in the name of God. Please remember in your prayers the sin, the age and the suffering of our fellow Christians, our families, and friends. Praying especially for Anne's imagining her parent, Reverend Cruz. I know just on Friday was diagnosed with COVID. She's at home. She's getting through it. It's, it looks like she's going to make it okay. But do keep them both in your prayers for Anne and for Karen, uh, who are going through the coronavirus suffering. And the rotation to keep Karen, especially in your prayers. I know because her health is delicate and uh, I want to see her come to this. As she always has, everything else she's suffered strongly. We pray as well for Tracy, Estelle, Donna, John, Joy, Frank, Sarah, Suzanne, Patty, Laura, Craig, Justin, Carol, David, Amir, Dennis, and for Frederick, and especially for John, who just got through the operation on Friday that's coming. Pray for the dying, especially for Hugh and for James and Bishop. We pray as well for the lost, for atheists and prodigals, for Brett, Joshua, Mark, Christina, Liz, Keith, Cheryl, Katie, Heidi, Bishan, Heather, James, Hiraj, Megan, Gary, Pauly, Scott, James, and we pray for all the terrorists to turn back from the dark place to the light of God in Christ. We pray for God's guidance for John and his family, Spencer, Raina, Eric. The Donald, Ross, Isaac, Julie, Randy, Stevie, Andrew, and Andrew. The special attention to be prayed for Sam, for Jamal and his family, for Randy and his family, for Mooney, Jolie, Thomas, for Cookies Cafe, for the Korean and Seventh Day and Sovereign Joy Churches, those three all in our building. And for fire, police, EMS, dispatch workers to bravely do their office as well, and uh, with honor. Seeking on. We pray for America's return to Christ. For our Iran mission, broadcasting the tent uh, season in Iran and throughout that part of the world, you know, the impact of the world. For Women's Resource Clinic, for the COVID 19 recovery, we pray for no rain last Sunday, but one of the most, and it needs to be done again several, several times. We pray for this rain season to increase <coughs> safely, but like last week, to Begin to fill the reservoirs. We've got a real, real uh, dangerous system. May it be not nearly over uh, the home weekend. We pray for a safe night tonight for the city of Chico. Uh, Halloween sometimes has been a dry, crazy, carousing time, so we pray that people give each other respect and do, do right by that. Uh, just simply stay safe. We pray, especially for the kids. And we pray for all of God's purposes, not us, through us as He wills, that we receive His grace and His purpose, and His purposes for us to live forever in His kingdom. We pray for those in our service, especially Ed, Gavin, Douglas, and Reese, for all travelers, for our children and youth, especially at St. Catherine's and the Providence of Christ. Are there any birthdays that we celebrate here in the Catholic Life? We do. Pray for those Christian merit or any anniversaries. We have uh, God. We give thanksgiving also for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, and our own King Jesus Christ. Such a, a wonderful King. You think of kings, you think of terror and armies and armors and stuff. He is the most wonderful King and a King forever. Not mentioned in my sermon, which was long enough as it was. But, um, he is king forever, and the reason being that he rose again from the dead, and in that he is the king, rightful king of this world and of Israel. He never dies, and therefore the kingship goes on forever in him because he's born. And though he may be above in heaven at the right hand of the Father, he's alive as a king of day, and the name of the Lord born eternal. So we attach to that, you know. We Almighty and ever living God, who by the holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers 
that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, especially John, our Archbishop, Donald and Scott, our bishops, and other ministers, especially Brian and uh, David Deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants, departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of a heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. Make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneel. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our mysterious. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past. Grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, for the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sin to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith and under have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Here we come to the words of Savior Christ, said unto all who truly turn to him, and let it be all you to prevail in their heavy laden and our glory fresh. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the hand of all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You're also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to receive that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John said, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lift up your Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is me and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father. Almighty, everlasting God, who hast anointed thine only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, to be a priest forever and King of all, so that by offering himself upon the altar of the cross, a pure an atoning victim, he might accomplish the mystery of mankind's redemption, and subduing unto his rule 
the whole creation might render unto thine eternal majesty a kingdom endless and universal, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of grace and holiness, a kingdom of peace, of love and of righteousness. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, tender mercy didst give thine only son Jesus Christ to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute and in this holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice till his coming again for in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. And of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receive in them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, Mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all of us who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us, and we 
in him. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and handmaidens who have gone before us with the sign of faith and are at rest in the sleep of peace. To these, O Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant a place of refreshment, of light, and of peace. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer to thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father, almighty world without end. Amen. Let us pray. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the rest of the seats, the old Lord, and all the evil of the past, present, and to come, and of the intercession of the blessed, glorious, and ever virgin Mary, Mother of God, for that of thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and Andrew, and all thy saints, be favored to grant peace in our time, by the help of thy mercy. We may ever be kept free from sin and safe from all disquietude. For the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, liveth and reigneth, one God, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. But in thy manifold and great mercy, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son Jesus Christ and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him. He and us. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. Speak the word, and my soul shall. 
What I am not worthy is doctor to my divine root. But I speak the word I will hear my soul is heaven. What I am not worthy is doctor to my divine root. But I speak the word I will hear my soul is heaven.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of the everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who has willed to restore all things in thy well-beloved Son, the King and Lord of all, mercifully grant that all peoples and nations, sin-wounded and divided, may be brought under the gentle yoke of his most loving rule, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Peace. Thanks be to God. Peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you this day and remain with you always. In 355.
how many seats to the Bible and Catholic Church. But thou wouldst be pleased to quote them all true. Where is corrupt in your mind? Where is an error in the record? Like anything is amiss in your form. Where is right established? Where is it one provided for? Where is divided and united, forsaken him who died and rose again, and never lived to make intercession for us? It's Christ thy son.